The problem, if you're a real estate salesperson, and you know this, like, you know, I don't have to tell you this because you already know, is you don't stand out. And yeah. if you go out in the marketplace and go, I give really good service, I care about my clients. And I'm honest. And I'm honest. Yeah. Well, 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 well it's, a cost of, it's a cost of entry. <laughs> like every single agent says the same yeah. thing. Yeah. You don't stand out by saying those things. Mm -hmm. However, I'm very excited today to have this gentleman sitting beside me. Um, anybody who's been listening and watching the podcast for a couple of years, it's actually a familiar face because he joined me a couple of years ago. I'm so excited to have my friend, Nikki Ballou, sitting with me today. How are you doing, buddy? It's an honor to be here, man. And uh, obviously some things have changed and some things have happened and we're going to touch on that. Uh, one of the main reasons I have my guest today is because I want to be speaking about his, not only his uh, uh, new book, but I think he's launched two new books, a new podcast, and he already had one of the world's most listened to podcasts, the guest that he's had. And I was just reading the back of uh, his book. I mean, he's had the founder of uh, BNI. He's had Jack Canfield. He's had Barbara Cocker from Shark Tank. The list goes on and on. Make sure, my boy, yes, you uh, uh, put the links in for all the podcast episodes. Mr. Nicky Ballou, how are you doing Pleasure today, Pleasure to brother? be here, brother. It's nice Thanks for having you. me. It's great to be here. We obviously do a lot of talking on the phone, and uh, uh, I've been on your podcast as well, but it's nice to just you got to come back person. again I soon. I appreciate yeah, yeah, that, yeah. brother. You had uh, uh, my VP, Laura Stewart, on your podcast I recently. i got to get my business partner, Simeon, on. Um, the The podcast name is Thought Leadership with Nikki Ballou, right? It's, it's called The Thought Leader Revolution, actually. Okay. With Nikki Ballou, yeah. Talking about thought leadership. Yeah, right. that's the okay. thing. Okay, you've been doing this for how many years now? Um... Going on five and a half years. Wow, the, congratulations. Thank right? you. As a fellow content creator, I know how tough it is to, to get guests, actually do the recordings, put out the recording. Just also just to get over yourself and, and remove that friction within your own head to, to, to get started. So five years, how many episodes did you say? Uh, like 299 just got released crazy. today. Well, this I think today's episode is 178. I could be yeah. wrong, but like <laughs> I'm chasing good. you, man. And <laughs> and you know I've said this on the podcast that we did a couple of years ago, and I tell people all the time, you're one of the main reasons why I was able to get started with my podcast three years ago because I bumped into you downstairs. Um, it's the Pico now, but it used to be the Starbucks uh, in the coffee shop. We've known each other for uh, for over Forever. a decade now. Forever. Um, but I asked you, I was like, well, what's this podcast thing, man? Like, it, you know, back then it wasn't like everybody knew what a podcast was. And you're like, Jazz, it's not that difficult to start. Use this. You can do it in your phone if you really want to. You use, obviously, a little better technology than that. That just gave me the confidence. So thank you for that. Of course. And to the viewers and the listeners, this is one of the main reasons. This guy right here is one of the main reasons why I started it's the podcast. blush. <laughs> well, hey, 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 I mean... hey, they say that's my specialty. Um, <laughs> look. The, the new book, The Power of Connecting, How to Activate Profitable Relationships by Serving Your Network. I mean, this is very near, de near and dear to my heart because I'm, I'm such a true believer that your net worth is always determined by your network. 100%. Right? We're a little older, you and I. I'm not going to try to age you. I'm not going to age myself. We always used to say, like, look, look at your Rolodex and who's ever in it will generally determine the power of your relationships, right? Yeah. The kids are like, what the heck is this guy talking about? Yes, it's like Rolodex. What the heck does that mean, you know? Rolodex is that you used to keep all of people's phone numbers and mailing addresses in one central spot. Now we have CRMs. We're gonna really dive into this, right? The reason yeah. I asked about the podcast name is because the word that gets thrown around a lot is thought leadership. What the heck does it mean? What is it? Why did you even name it that? Talk a little bit about the importance of thought leadership for business people. So, okay. There are many definitions of thought leadership, Jazz, but one of the most important definitions as far as a business person is concerned is best demonstrated through a bit of an analogy. So, I'll draw the distinction between an expert and a thought leader. Mm -hmm. An expert is someone who knows something. So experts are good, right? But a thought leader is someone who's known for knowing something. 
And that's a world of difference. Experts are a dime a dozen, with all due respect to experts. Thought leaders are rare and valuable. Another way to say it is, an expert is like a cover band. A thought leader plays original music. I like this. Yeah. And a thought leader is someone who's taken the time to do original thinking. So we run some programs on thought leadership, and we uh, pay homage to the great Matt Church from Australia for teaching us a lot of great concepts there. But when we help someone become a thought leader, one of the things we have them do is take a deep dive into themselves. So you have some uh, knowledge and background in expertise in sales. Okay, so if I were to have you do the program, I'd say, Jazz, first thing I want you to do is I want you to sit down, put away all your devices, and write out every statement you know to be true about sales based on your experience. Mm -hmm. Everything. So you might say, sales is a function of maintaining your relationship. Sales is an act of service. Sales is an act of love. Sales is an act of caring. We would just get you to go nuts. Minimum 52. One for each year. But we'd, we'd even want you to do more than that. Once we've got those out of your head, then step by step, we'll show you how to take that kernel of truth, which is that statement, and build it out. So then you'll explain it. So give me a statement around sales, just off the top of your head right now. I, I think the best salespeople remove the friction in the process of, of somebody doing business with you. Perfect. The best salespeople remove the friction in the process of doing business with you. Now, I want you to expand on that with just two sentences to more deeply explain it. Most salespeople, for example, don't follow up or, or even reply back to an email of a prospect because they're busy doing something else. Put systems, the great salespeople, the masters, already have systems in place, in my opinion, that make sure that they get the prospect's inquiry answered and then they actually follow up. They do what they say they were gonna do. Perfect. So you've got those three, four sentences. I'm not gonna try to reproduce them because you said a lot, but you went more deeply. So you have the statement and you have the explanation. Now, do you have at least four examples of people? Could include yourself, could mm -hmm. include people on your team, yes. could include people, you, you have four examples, first names. For sure. Rattle off four first names for uh, me. Jazz, Simeon, Laura, and Tyler. Done. Great. Is there some literature on sales that demonstrates this? Is there a sales book or two that off the top of your head you can tell me about right yes, now? Yes, I think, um, just trying to go back now, uh, how to influence uh, uh, Dale Carnegie's book. How to win, how to win and friends and influence, how to people. influence people. Um, for me, I, I, I go back to the success principles uh, by Jack Canfield. Okay, great. All right, and there's a couple more we can put in there. For Jeffrey sure. Gittimer's the, yes. the Little Sales Bible yes. is a great book to have in there. You know, and Daniel Pink to sell as human. Yes. Four books. Harry we Beck with the selling, selling the invisible. Selling the invisible. Great. Yeah. So we have the statement. We have the explanation. We have four case studies. We have four. Lit, we have a literature review of a minimum five books that yeah. we put in there. Then on the top here, we're going to have a visual model. So behind Yaz's head, we're going to draw something. It could be a Venn diagram. It could be a ladder model. Ladder model is probably best because you're going to show salespeople who suck at all that stuff and mm. salespeople who are masterful. And you're going to have little steps on the ladder of where people can be, which is the continuum of where they're at. Then you're going to have a metaphor. What's that like? What is this like? Like, give me a metaphor. Um, great salespeople are, are like, um, ooh, you got me on this. Great one. lovers. Great, uh, yeah, sure. Great. You know, because they're great listeners. There you I go. Like it. Great sales people are like great lovers to be because a great they're lover, great you listeners. Love. You gotta listen, and you to gotta what? care about it. your yeah. beloved. Yeah. I get that. There yeah, you go. Like, so no. we see we did this together. This is the power of like 100%. like in the group, like people do the all this stuff together. The power of connecting. The power of connecting. Yeah. So Jazz, congratulations. Out of those hundred statements we wrote down, we took one right now, and in yeah. like ten minutes, yeah. we created deep IP around that. You yes. see that there's. Four case studies. Yeah. There's a literature review. Yeah. There's a visual, just like you know, like we've got some visuals here in the book, right? That we've got for people, and this is one of I our saw, visuals. Yeah, of yeah, right yeah. There. So yeah. that's the visual. Okay. Then you've got the metaphor, and then just to take it to a whole new level, because we like bleeding beyond the edge. Sure. We're going to have you find six other ways to say the statement. We're going to have you say it formally in case you were in front of a bunch of banker types. We're going to have you say it casually in case you were around people like me who dress like this. We're going to say it simply for little kids under the age of 10. We're going to say it in an inspiring way for teenagers who need to be inspired and go, go, go. We're going to say it pragmatically for people in their 30s just like they're 
they're you know trying to figure out how to pay for home family all that and we're going to see it in a wise way for the wise elders who are like 70. Mm -hmm. so that takes it to a whole new level now imagine jazz you've done a hundred of these in the area of sales mm -hmm. but imagine you said to me nikki you know what i love everything i'm doing now but i'm going to launch a sales education company mm -hmm. these hundred that you created now that will take more than 10 minutes to do obviously, obviously. <laughs> yes but let's say you created all that can be the basis for a retreat yep. a mastermind for salespeople an online course with modules for salespeople a coaching program that you'll license out for other people to teach your new sales book will have these hundred well, you'll take like 12 chapters <laughs> your, your best you'll your 12 best you'll put in there with the visual models done and keynote talks galore each one of those could be its own keynote talk that you could give on different podcasts my friend that's how we take people from wherever they are, from broke to a million dollars a year in three years or less. This is the methodology. 83% chance of adding between a quarter million and two and a half million a year to your business. This is just for a one-person shop. Right. Now, if you owned your own company, that's not how thought leadership works for you. Thought leadership for you is going to be you want to be Elon Musk of your space. You want to be Steve Jobs of your space. So you're not going to create stuff to sell it to people, but you are going to create your IP. You're going to take that IP and use that as the basis for all your communication with employees, all your communication with investors, all your communication with clients. The richest person in the world right now, it's a tie between Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Mm -hmm. If you were to say, which one of those is the thought leader? I think it's obvious it's Elon Musk. Yep. It's not Jeff Bezos, yep. right? Which one of those has experienced faster growth in the last five years? It's Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Why is that? Elon is seen as a thought leader. People know him for being the guy who cares about changing the world through having cars that don't use fossil fuels. That is what he's known for. During the pandemic, Elon Musk was the one business leader in the state of California who went to the government and said, you guys are full of caca, excuse my language over here. This is fascism, you, you gotta stop this. Yeah, sure, we have to like be concerned, but there's, the, the government cannot use that as an excuse to take away all, all our rights. And he almost got arrested over yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But what happened to his brand after that happened? Oh, Jazz, his shot, net yeah. worth yeah. quadrupled. Yeah. Because there's people who thought, yeah, Elon, he's one of those like, you know, tree hugger boys. types. Yeah, he's yeah. a cuckoo boy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. no, 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 he believes in freedom. So, okay, Tesla sales shot up. He couldn't get enough parts to fulfill his orders. You think about that. Chaz, that's what thought leadership made for this guy. So he has a brand as a guy who cares about, you yep. know, the environment in the future. He has a brand as a man who stands up for freedom and isn't going to let the government push you around. Tell me if those brands have value. A hundred percent, and the values have shot through the roof. Now, but yeah. most of my listeners and viewers, Nikki, okay, and you did a great job of unpacking what thought Thank leadership you. is, like a phenomenal job. I mean, everyone can tell, anybody who's watching or listening right now could tell that he knows what he's talking about. Um, and I want to actually definitely give you an opportunity to to talk about how you guys, because you said we, and, the, and I yeah, know yeah, you guys have a group, and yeah, you put yeah. all this stuff together, and you help people. But most of my viewers and listeners, they're not trying to be the next Elon Musk. They're, they're not, not trying, right? They're, their headspace is not even close to that. Most my they're guys real and gals, people? they're either real estate investors, or they're real estate salespeople and or business owners. For them, this makes even more sense. So go, tell me. So tell, listen, Jeff, they, they don't want to be, they don't want to be worth seven billion, no, 70 no, billion. No, but they want to make stuff. a couple million a year. Well, yes, or at least let's talk to the person who's making $50,000 and we're trying to get them to 200,000. $200,000, $200, exactly. All right, so look, the problem if you're a real estate salesperson, and you know this, like, you know, I don't have to tell you this because you already know, is you don't stand out. And yeah. if you go out in the marketplace and go, I give really good service, I care about my clients. And I'm honest. And I'm honest. Yeah. Well, well, well it's, well, a, cost of, it's a cost of entry. <laughs> like every single agent says the same yeah. thing. Yeah. You don't stand out by saying those things. Mm -hmm. However, if you have your own podcast, if you teach investors about how to be smart about making their first couple hundred grand off of a deal, if you have a whole team that's dedicated to putting content out about these topics, you might stand out a little, don't you, Jess? Mm -hmm. Do you know someone like that? Yeah. And his, his initials are JT? <laughs> I Who is that guy? Do you know him? I appreciate it. Have you heard of him? Yes, right. behind yeah. the camera. Okay. So, but look, these other agents don't even need to do what you do. They don't need to go create this studio and do all that. All they need to do is they need to go, what do I know? What is it about me and what I do and my expertise that I can start to write about? So... 
the first thing they ought to do is, you know, honestly listen to my podcast. But there's a book of mine that I, you had me on for last time, The Thought yeah. Leader's Journey. Yeah. If they just grab that and read that, that's like that's 20 human. bucks, right? Yeah. It's right there. It's, yeah. I see it right there, oh, there under is. the yeah. hat. I knew, I knew I had a bunch of yeah. them here, man. So, yeah, yeah, you were gracious. You were, you were the first guy to buy books, so I very much appreciate it. But in this book, there are like 13 chapters, and that's not the book we were mainly talking about no. today. But these chapters, anybody in real estate can buy this book for 20 or 30 bucks, whatever the heck it is on Amazon these days. If you can't invest 30 bucks in yourself, shame on you, number yeah, one. Yeah, right? For sure. You got to yeah. invest in yourself. You got to invest yeah. in yourself. Yeah. yeah. Just implement what's said here. Just implement it. Just do it. Just go and find out what you know. Write it out in a paper, you, you know, on a sheet of paper. And then if you've done all this stuff and you go to yourself, I need more, and you're a believer in personal development, come sign up for one of our courses. We've got a two and a half hour workshop we do, which is basically, you know, the little known secret to adding like a million dollars a year to your practice within three years. So this ain't, oh, this ain't gonna happen overnight. We don't believe in get rich quick. But step by step, all the stuff I told you about how to get your expertise out, we'll show them how to do it in real estate. And then you start talking about that. You start talking about what you care about. So there might be a guy in Toronto who loves Kensington Market. Mm. He could be the Kensington lover. He could lo it. know all the stores there. He could know all the people there. He could know all the local history and color. If that dude started to just talk about Kensington, start to like, like get into Kensington and go, Oh yeah, Kensington, and then go, if you want to really learn a neighborhood, he could create his own thought leadership about how to become an expert about a neighborhood. Uh, well, and, and, and I that want you works. to touch on this as well. Not everyone's going to be as charismatic as you, okay? Not everyone is as good looking as Jasmine. It's true. My, Not everyone's as good looking as Jasmine. Except Yaz well. behind the, the camera. Yaz is he should be in front of the camera, this guy. Look at the curly hair. Look at yeah. the curly hair. I mean, it just wakes out of bed. The, girl, the, girl, like the girls are, must uh, be running after him. hundred percent. Um... Don't want to get in front of the camera, not comfortable, okay? Don't have to do it. So what can they do? What they can do, brother, really simple, is start to write all this stuff out, start doing posts, start letting people know this is who they are and this is what they're all about. And they need to put together, they need to go say, you know what, here's one thing they could do. This Kensington fellow, he could go and say, knock on about uh, two dozen doors there and say, listen, I'm writing a special report about this neighborhood. Would it be okay if I asked you a few questions just so I understand, you know, your, your perspectives on this? And here's what I promise you I'm going to do. This is a white paper by Kensington Market. I'm going to give you, hand deliver a copy to you once I've interviewed all your, your people so you'll know everything it is. Now, let me ask you something. If you lived in a neighborhood and someone came and sincerely said to you, I'm going to do this, would you give me a few minutes of your time? What would be your answer? Yeah, for sure. 100%, yeah. right? If I called you right now and I said to you, Jazz, even if I didn't know you, I said to you, Jazz, Jazz, listen, I'm interviewing the top 50 realtor teams in Canada. And what I want to do is I want to really understand what is it that allows them to be so successful. And I am going to put together a white paper and I will share the results of this white paper with you. Would you give me half an hour of your time for me to interview? What would be your answer? Definitely. Now, and, and, and I love how you pose the question. And for salespeople out there, understand that I said yes. And Nikki said, Nikki would say yes. And maybe Yas would say yes. However, the first 14 people you call, for whatever reason, they're not comfortable, they don't know you, they don't have the time right now, they might say no. That doesn't mean you quit. I know if you make 50 calls, 13 might say no, but the 14th, 18th, 22nd person is gonna say yeah, you'll get five people all you need. So don't get stuck, because that's what that's what happens, Nikki. I get the comments, I get people walking into this. Someone office said no to me, you. I'm gonna quit. I'm done. Well, Jazz, the shit that you were talking about with Nikki is bullshit. It doesn't work. It Here's doesn't my work. question. Here's my question to those people. If I put a million dollars on this table and I said by five o'clock today, this is yours, if you got five people to answer those questions, how many of you would make sure if you found five people? 100%. Yeah, because it's, it's there. It's a proper it, motivation. And, and it's on the table, right? They don't, they, 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 they in but, my opinion, don't see, they can't visualize that the money is there, the, if that's what you're looking for. That, that pot of gold is at the end of the rainbow. You just gotta, you gotta put the work in. It's not like what Nikki said, the million dollars is actually on the table. I wanna shift it slightly to investors, because what I hear from investors, I need $100,000 a down payment on this property, okay? But I only have $30,000. So Some of the same somebody. principles apply. Find somebody to give you the 70, what's, what's That's the it. problem? Or two people who have $35,000 each. Or whatever, yeah, right? exactly. How could, the how could 
thought leadership help other real estate investors? The, the, the so process. So that's a really good question, okay? Because we've had a couple of real estate investors that have done our program. So one of them is a man by the name of Victor Minash. I don't know if you, you oh, know Oh, I know Victor. Victor really well. Big so, shout out to Victor, uh, Real Estate Espresso podcast. Yeah, he was on dude. this podcast as well. So he was on John Stafford. Great dude. So yeah, great guy. Amazing. Love Victor. So Victor was a real estate investor mm-hmm. who used to do like five to 10 unit deals. That was his whole shtick, right? And he was good at it. And he wrote a couple books about, you know, investing in the U.S. But I said, Victor, dude, you know, you actually know a lot about how to raise capital, right? And he said, yeah, yeah. I said, you need to write a book about how to do that. And I, he, I was coaching him at the time, and he was in my program, and finally he did it, okay? He jumped in and he did it. And then I said, all right, Victor, you need to start a podcast. And he said, what? Podcast? I said, what? 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 Victor, you need a podcast. So he started the podcast. And here's what's happened as a result of Victor speaking about these issues you know, and Victor is nobody's idea of, you know, an extrovert, okay? Victor is a very, uh, you know, he's a very kind of, uh, he's, he's a good man, yes. but he's very soft-spoken man. Very you know, soft-spoken. Very soft-spoken. Yeah. And he's very passionate about what he talks yes. about, but he's soft-spoken. He's not like me. He's not like you, right? Not at all. Not at all. But Victor started doing this. Within a year, he started getting asked to be on, on radio shows, TV shows. He started the podcast. Victor now has a lineup of people who beg for the privilege of giving him seventy to two hundred thousand dollars so he'll teach them how to raise capital. And he has a lineup of people. He can't help all the people that want his help. And, and, and on I, top of that, no, let's let me finish yeah. the story. He now does five hundred to ten thousand unit deals. Five to ten unit deals, five hundred to ten thousand unit deals. That all came because he took the thoughts that were in his head, he put them in the form of a book, he took the thoughts that were in his head, he started to create a podcast out of it. People started to know who the heck he was and away he went. The book alone got him a certain level of notoriety. The book plus the podcast took him to a new level. Now, your investor might not want to be Victor, might not want to be in front of a podcast or a camera and all that, but they could take what they have and they could write it out, they could start sharing it with people who are interested, they could start having conversations with people and sharing what they do. You can also, like this is kind of, you know, a totally different idea. I don't think I've ever even told a real estate investor to do this when it comes to uh, uh, trying to be a thought leader or just even produce content. We as humans, we like to consume content either through video, audio, the written word, as well as images. A real estate investor, you can go around the city of Toronto, the country, the continent, and just take pictures. If you have a, a talent in, in photography, you can take pictures of multiplex buildings, of condos, of land, and just write little two, three sentences. People are going to start That's to a wonder. That's great idea. Right? It's, like, I just, it just came great to idea. me because I thought of Humans of New York. This gentleman, I always forget his name, Yas. We're going to try to find this guy. He went and just took pictures of, of uh, uh, guys and gals in New York. Okay, and now he's making, I think, 10 to 15 million dollars a year because he came out with a book, his social media presence, his YouTube channel, just images. I don't think I've ever heard him speak, actually. You know, like I don't even know who it is. <laughs> like there's not very many images, the images of speak. him. The images but speak. The, the, the images speak to people. You spoke about the, like writing books. I really want to speak about this new book that you came out with. What brought it about? Let's start there. So look, a few years ago, I developed this concept called the power of connecting. I had a coach by the name of Bill, and Bill uh, and I put together this idea of how going into your own network will allow you to dramatically, dramatically increase your revenues. And the idea was this. So do an inventory of everyone you know. I don't mean all your social media contacts that you've never met, you know, or your followers. I mean people you know that if you picked up the phone and called them, they would recognize your name and go, yeah, this is Jess. Great. Do an inventory of those. The average person has at least 250 such people in their life. I always say 200. Yeah. Yep. I always, go, I always yeah. go there. Yeah. So my, you know, limited kind of uh, in the field experience has shown that people have at least twice as many as they think they do. So when I had a client go through this program, they said, how many do you think you have? I have 100. I have 200. When they actually did the inventory, went through their phone, their LinkedIn, their Facebook, to see who they actually knew, it was at least double. So if they said they had 250, they actually had 500. Then the next step we had them do, okay, and this is all outlined in the book as well, is we said, who are your best connections? Who are the people in here that are the people that if you called, they would smile? And go, it's jazz. 
Oh, wow, so good to hear from you, Jazz. What's going on? They're actually happy for the interruption. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, those yeah. people, those are your best connections. Those could be people you love, people who love you, your best clients, people you've made a lot of money for, employees that you've helped move to the next level, people who are no longer working with you, but hey, you got them their start. These are the people that love you. Then you make an inventory of them. And I ask most people, how many of those are there? And they almost always say like 10. And it's more like 100. So mm -hmm. they have 10 times as many best connections as they think they do. But let's say it was only 20, okay? Mm -hmm. Then I go, you're going to do the next thing. And you're going to write a, a, a note to them and you're going to give them a call. And you're basically going to say, Jazz, buddy, so good to talk to you. I want you to know you're one of my best connections, man. I love and adore you. And the next thing I want to say is, Jazz, you know what? I want to know more people just like you. And, you know. What are you going to think? You're going to go, wow, this is great. Yeah, yeah this is great. This guy, feel good. Right. For sure. And then after that, I'm going to say, the best way for me to know more people like you is how? So Through you. Because you know people like you. People know people like themselves. Setting up on blind dates. Right, right on. And then I'm going to say, but Jazz, I'm not here to be just a taker, man. I hate that. I've been thinking that, you know what? There's someone I want to introduce to you. And so, do you mind if I make an introduction? I think this person could become a client for you. You remember the other day, like, I, I, I texted you, I said, this, this guy needs sure. someone like you. Like, they, that's in my mind. Like, what are you going to think when that happens? You're going to go, wow, that was really nice of him. That was really great. So, then when I say, Jazz, now that I've introduced you to this person, can you think of somebody like this? Right? You're going to go, yeah, I think I can. And then I'm going to say, pull out your phone. Go through it right now. Let's pick, find someone right now. Let's not put off any energy. Because we know what happens once you do that. When you right? put off, nothing happens, yeah. right? Napoleon Hill, when Andrew Carnegie met with him and said, listen, Mr. Mr. Hill, I would like you to spend the next 20 years of your life talking to the 500 most successful people in the United States. I will give you no subsidy, but at the end, you will have produced the definitive work on success. What do you say? It took him 31 seconds to say yes. And years later, he found out that under the table, good old Andrew Carnegie had his beautiful, expensive, ornate watch, and he was looking, he'd given him a minute to answer. And then Andrew Carnegie said, the most successful people answer immediately. They know if it's a yes or a no. All the people who have limited to no success need to think about it. We'll get back to you. Never once get back you, to once somebody. Once you make that decision, right? You once decide you, you that, cut yeah. off all other possibilities, right. right? So we did this with a bunch of people. And I thought, man, I want to get this in the hands of lots of people. Now, there's a lot here about why people need connections. That's like chapter three. We go into how we got here. We go into this whole distraction thing, the digital distraction, the ugly truth about that, how that's hurting people. We go into Zoom and how Zoom has impacted connecting for people. There's a lot of detailed studies and research done in here, books, actual research studies. Now, I have my thoughts on why most people, you know, I have a team of 51 agents, um, 11 support staff, been doing sales uh, for coming up to almost 27 years now, okay, at the end of this year. And I've seen enough salespeople come and go. I've coached a lot of them. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've personally though, have always built my, my, my sales and done a lot of deals in whatever I've been selling. Newspapers, shoes, at the bank, cars, and now real estate for the past 16 years, all through my, my network, okay? Because it's just, for me, I always liked working with people that already like me, already know me, and already trust me. 100%. And I just found it easier, like this, 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 taking in a lot of cold leads and, and uh, from the Facebooks and the Instagrams. Not that it doesn't work, um, like Google AdWords and all that, but then you're not, they're not picking up your phone and, and you need to build the authority and the credibility. So for me, it's always worked really well. I have my thoughts on why most people are not comfortable picking up the phone, writing that letter. I want to hear from you though. Why do you think some people have so much friction, salespeople and business owners, why do they have so much friction in, in reaching out to people that they know already? Brother, I hate to say it because it really pains me, but it's digital distraction, brother. You think so? In a big way. Go, elaborate on that. So, here's the ugly truth about digital distraction. There are good people out there that have more of a relationship with their devices than they do with human beings. And you got to be thinking how sad that is, right? 
and they spend so much time. You can get on your phone, you can get into Facebook and get lost there for, for a sure. couple hours. Same with Instagram, it's addictive. It's actually been designed by the big tech companies to hit the same centers in your brain as heroin and cocaine addiction. Think about that. Steve Jobs would not allow his kids more than a certain amount of time on iPhones. Steve Jobs, the man who invented the damn thing. Think about it. And to me, if you want to be more connected to people, the first thing you need to do is you need to make a conscious effort to limit the amount of time you spend on digital devices. Digital devices are lovely. They allow a lot to be accomplished, but they can be a massive, massive time suck. Now, so, so do, you, do you think it's because people are not taking the time to do it? Because my thoughts on it is they're just fearful of looking needy to someone that they know. Meaning, most salespeople, when I ask them to make phone calls and pick up the phone or go set up a coffee with a family member, a friend, uh, uh, somebody that they worked with, somebody that they knew, they get stuck because they're worried about what that person's going to think of them, right? For me, I almost felt, and still do to, to this day, I feel the exact opposite, that it's actually quite selfish of me to not let someone else feel good by helping me because I need the help at all times. I'm growing my business. I have, you know, my media company that I just started. You see it on the, on, on the whiteboard here it says road to a thousand road to a thousand clients. I need help. Okay. I'm at 13 clients right now for that part of our business. I got a long way to go. And so I want to talk about that. A hundred percent. We're going to talk to about you, that tonight. Yes. A hundred percent. I, I, I know when you help me, it feels good for you. Feels and I don't great. want to rob you from that feeling. I'm not trying to be manipulative about this. Like, this is, like, I feel best when I help somebody else. And so for some reason, most business owners and salespeople are not catching that. Like they're, just, they're, they're, they're not willing to pick up the phone and allow somebody else to feel good about themselves. Society has conditioned us to look at salespeople as slimy, as bad. I mean, the whole fuller brush model, there's commission breath on a lot of salespeople because all they care about is the commission. And that's not really true, but it's how they operate because inside all of us, we need to be connected to other people. There's two things every human being needs, freedom to roam, right? And connecting with other people. Devices are pulling us away from connecting. Right? And if you look at some of the studies that I cite in the book, there's people in places like Japan and Korea, brother, that never leave their home. They're modern day hermits. They are there for decades. They're home. Every piece of food gets brought in here. They don't have any human contact. It's sad as all get out. And now in our society, in our world, people are saying, oh, that's a slimy sales gal. That's a slimy sales guy. You don't want to be that person. Oh, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to come. What are you talking about? The truth of the matter is, if you know and care about someone, it is your obligation to help them. If what you do in your business helps people and the people in your life need your help and you don't do it, shame on you. Shame on you. You let some charlatan take care of them and rob them and make them feel bad rather than you, a good person who gives a good gosh darn? I'll slap you silly. Unless you're one of those charlatans or, or, or you know, you're slimy. No charlatans are yeah. allowed to listen uh -huh. to the rec podcast. They're not allowed. That. Get the heck out of here. hundred percent. Only that. good people listen <laughs> to this podcast. I appreciate that. <laughs> Give me one more, one or two more things that uh, our readers can um, expect to, to get out of this new book of yours, brother. So I'll tell you, they should take uh, in chapter nine, mm -hmm. it's called the nuts and bolts. There's a scorecard. Like that. Scorecard right here on page 70 about the power of connecting. You basically will determine how connected you are, how, how, how well you're using your connections. And you can use this scorecard and a whole bunch of other questions to determine how to help you become a better connector, how to help you go deeper into your network and A, serve them, but B, also, listen, I love it when Jazz introduces me to somebody great in his network because he says, listen, my, my, my man Nikki over here is a man you need to know. He's a good man. He does this sort of thing. A, he's a good person to know. But B, given that you need this type of help, you need to talk to this guy because he's going to take care of you. He's not going to rip you off. That's a fantastic thing. And this, this one 
thing, this scorecard in this book can absolutely completely transform the lives of salespeople and investors that are here. They can find more clients for themselves if they're salespeople. They can find more potential funders of their deals if they're investors. The power of connecting is the key to all success. I'm telling you what, this book is a book you should get for yourself. This book is a book that you should buy for the 10 people you love the most. And this is a book that you should buy and give to your 10 best clients and prospects. And you should personally sign it and say, I, gave, I bought this book and gave it to you because I love you and I care about you. And I want to help you become more connected to the people you care about in your life. And I want you to become more connected to the people that you want to do business with. And if they do that, it, they're going to dramatically transform their own life. You should set up little groups where you read a chapter a week out of this and 10 of you talk about it because then you can all get more deeply connected to each other, but you can find a way to get more deeply connected to other people in one another's networks. Your business can grow by 50K to $5 million a year if all you do is you take an inventory of all your connections, talk to all your best connections, give them each a connection or do something good for them and ask them to make a good connection for you. Let me tell you a short story before we wrap up, brother, that you're going to absolutely adore. So I run a CEO group, right? It's a men's group, but it's also a group of men who are CEOs. And one of the things uh, that we do in that group is we connect people to each other. There's a man in that group. He runs a sports memorabilia company. So, by the way, if you need sports memorabilia or anything framed, this is your guy, Muhammad Ali, awesome. Michael Jordan, all that stuff. I love that, that stuff. stuff. He, yeah, like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. He, he just sold Muhammad Ali's robe to, wow. a, to a, another client of mine what for $12,000. Like $12,000. $12, $12, wow, yeah, okay. yeah. well, so, surprisingly, it's, it's actually it's pretty, it's a, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. Muhammad Ali's robe. Muhammad Ali himself. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. I did to hear more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was good. It was good. So, so this dude goes, okay, you know, like he operates primarily in Alberta and Ontario, across Canada. So I introduced him to Wayne Allen Root, who I wrote my, my other book with, you know. Um, and Wayne is, Wayne's a good friend of Victor Menashe's. Right. Wayne's a great guy. Wayne's involved in sports gambling, okay. So these guys have been talking about doing some stuff together, right. They're in the sports world with one another. And that connection can potentially help both of these men do an incredible amount of business, an incredible amount of business, okay? And if you think about that, brother, that connection has like a seven to eight figure value on it, just because he knew me. Another man in the group, restaurant owner, freaking out in January because everything's in lockdown and he's a sit down restaurant place. How do I survive this? And one of the other men in the group said, no, brother, that's not the right question. The right question is, how do you thrive because mm -hmm. of this? And he said, you need to go buy a bunch of restaurants that are takeout. You need to make all your existing restaurants takeout. You need to go find all the restaurants that have gone bankrupt and buy them cheap. So this guy had two restaurants. He's now up to 11. He's added 12 million to his uh, annual revenues from the beginning of the year. I believe his uh, additional profit of a couple million bucks. Because he knew this other man in the room, he asked the question of this man in the room. So if you read this book and you start speaking to other people, other than the ones you're talking now, you go out of your bubble, brother, you could add a million bucks to your business, 10 million bucks to your business. You are one great connection away from a transformation in your business that will completely and dramatically take you into a whole new space in life, in business, as a human being, and as one of God's creatures with a soul on this planet. I love how you, you know, uh, uh, tell your stories. I love the energy. I don't doubt anything you just said about building relationships and networking. I personally now cultivate um, and have been cultivating um, a network of a little over uh, 9,600 people for the last 16 years. And 92% of my business comes from those 90. 600 people okay the coolest thing that that I've come to realize is that some of those people believe it or not when I was 17 years old 16 years old were sell selling shoes with me Wow and then I have hundreds of people that purchased cars with me 22 years ago 21 years ago that now invest in real estate with me and so I implore everyone who's watching and listening right now to a get this book the power of connecting 
okay, by Nikki Ballou. I don't want to butcher. Uh, it's, it's Kai, Kai Bjorn. Kai Bjorn. Um, a, get the book. Are you doing an audiobook for this one? We don't voice. have it yet, you know but I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. You got to do the I got to do it. Okay, you got to do the audiobook. So for now, go to Amazon. Yeah, Amazon, yeah. Get the book. Number two is start by you business people and you sales people. Start picking up the phone and start calling and just asking if you can be of service to anyone in your network. In any way, maybe they're looking for a connection. Maybe they're looking for your product or service. Because I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you what Nikki spoke about, about, about how you can thrive in business, how you can double your business, how you can quadruple your business. Maybe you're only looking to you know, tw you know, make an extra 25% or 10% next year. Whatever it is, it can happen all through your network, the people that you already know and that like you and trust you. Mr. Nikki Ballou, leave our viewers and listeners with one more tip. I'm putting you on the spot, brother. I will give you one more tip, but yes. you got to do me a favor. You yes. got to sport the colors for me for a sec here, right? 100%. So we're both looking there. 100%, buddy. I haven't worn a hat in a while. Well, yeah, I, I usually don't wear them, but I brought it in here. Yeah, I got a got fresh shirt. fade. So talk to me. Well, what is this? So this is Sovereign Man Movement. Yes. Sovereign Man Movement is a new men's organization I've created because I, I feel that men these days are a little bit lost. A okay. lot of men just don't know how to live in, uh, and operate in the world. Gender roles have changed a little bit. And unfortunately, there's been a, a society has been uh, very anti-man and anti-boy in some ways. They've been using phrases like toxic masculinity, which you'd never use about you know, the other gender, and you shouldn't, nor should it be used around men. So we are here to help men uh, claim back their power to realize- Within themselves. Again, within themselves. Within themselves. Within I like, themselves. I like always, when you elaborate on that, yeah, right? when you mention that, it's not yeah. power over anybody. No, no, man, just no, within no, no, themselves. No. I'm a freedom. I'm a freedom I, lover. I know, no power. No power yeah. over anybody yeah. except yourself. But we want them to within be be badasses and, and and warriors, and we want them to go out and live life as the best version of themselves. And um, this movement's great. We've got a bunch of uh, people who are doing programs and courses with us. Um, there's a program I've created called the Battle Ready Program. It's an eight-week program where we bring in men from in various stages in their life to help, frankly, teach them uh, the principles of how to be uh, a masculine man, you know, and be, be proud of that and, 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 and to, like, do away with the stereotypes of men being bad and wrong and toxic and all that crap. Uh, and, and also, brother, we have a podcast, a brand-new podcast. So now I have, I'm doing two podcasts a week right now, three episodes a week total. Um, and this one, I usually interview... Uh, a man who's pretty successful and also has thought deeply about issues of masculinity. And we talk about topics. We talk about what it means to be sovereign. Like to be sovereign means to be self-sufficient, financially self-sufficient, spiritually self-sufficient, emotionally self-sufficient, etc. We talk about how to have man skills, how to be able to like, you know, change a tire or, you know, get out there and have some good survival skills, how to be able to like hunt if you needed to ever, etc. We talk about things um, mental health. Mental health. We haven't gotten into that yet, no. but but it's a good idea. We talk about how to be a good man in a relationship with your woman. You know, whether you're married or you're in a long-term committed relationship, we, we want you not to screw it up. I screwed up my marriage. I want to make sure a lot of other men don't do that. You got to honor your woman and honor honor her and treat her like the queen that she is. These are the sorts of topics that we talk about. I think they're very important and very powerful. And if there's anyone listening here as a man. Or if you, you're a woman and you have a man in your life who you know is feeling a little lost or you're feeling a little lost or you want to understand and explore these, these concepts, come listen to the podcast. Maybe come check out our website, SovereignMan.ca. And I'll leave this tip to you. As a, as a, as a human being on the planet, your biggest obligation is, is to love, to grow, and to contribute to your fellow man and woman. So every day you want to give love to other people. Like I have love for my buddy Jazz. I have love for my new buddy Yaz over here. I have love for everyone that I come into contact with, even the people that I disagree with about one thing or another. They're a fellow human being, a child of God. I want to show them love. Grow. You got to read. You got to read books like this. You got to listen to podcasts like yours. You got to like fill your mind with ideas. You got to take the ideas that are within you and do what I talked about earlier with writing down all your best ideas and doing that, that deep dive into the, um, in, 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 into the creation of the IP around it. And then you got to contribute. You got to be here to make a difference for other people. And the smartest business people are those who center their businesses around contributing to their fellow man and woman. I love it. Nikki, yeah. thank you so much for your time today, buddy. Thank you for I yours, appreciate God you. God bless you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.